Cimarron Valley Research Station in Perkins and joining me is Dr. Brian Kahn. Well, Brian, I wanted to look at some problems that are very common uh, in our home gardens with peppers. Now, peppers, of course, are great uh, summer crops. They do really well in the heat, but sometimes we experience a few problems and uh, we have a nice example here. So tell me what we're seeing. Um, let's start with this one here. Yeah, this this is a pepper that would ripen from green to red, so that's what the red's about. But this ugly black thing here is blossom end rot. Mm -hmm. And that's the same blossom end rot that a lot of your gardeners are used to seeing on their tomatoes. Well, yeah. of course, pepper is a tomato relative. It gets the same type of symptom. And when we hear rot, a lot of times we think that it's a disease, but in this case, it's not a disease organism. It's non-pathogenic. Mm -hmm. what, what happens with blossom end rot, it's fundamentally a moisture imbalance problem. The plant likes to have a nice steady supply of moisture as it's growing. And if you get too many fluctuations, especially if you get periods of drought in there, mm -hmm. then you get a localized calcium deficiency here at the blossom end and the cells die and you get this sunken leathery black area. If it does have fungus in it, it's secondary. Mm -hmm. It just took that wound, uh, took advantage of the wound. Invaded the dead tissue, exactly. Now a lot of times, you mentioned that we also get this in tomatoes and there's a lot of sort of um, traditional gardening practices of trying to add extra calcium around the plants. Is that going to be helpful for us? It's good for the plant to have an adequate calcium supply. Um, the single best thing you can do to prevent or minimize blossom end rot is to have good steady growth of your plants. So you want to have proper pH, you want to have good nutrition, and especially you want to have as regular a moisture supply as possible. And it's tricky. These plots have buried drip irrigation down the middle of these raised beds, and even with that, we're still seeing the problem this year. And that could also be because we've had so much rain, so Again, we're you, getting a different type of fluctuation. If you, <laughs> if you fluctuate like that, it's very possible. Now here we have uh, another problem, and this is sun scald. Um, it's here too. Yeah, and as it sounds, it's caused by the sun. What can we do for this? Not too much that you can do with that. One of the, this is a cultivar trial. I've got 18 cultivars of different bell peppers in here that we're looking at for yield and adaptation. One of the things that we make notes of is when we get cull peppers, why are they being culled? Does a particular cultivar have more or less blossom end rot or more or less sun scald than mm -hmm. another? And if it has less, maybe it has a better crop canopy, better foliage. Anything you can do just to encourage good healthy growth of the plant is going to help keep sun scald down. But when you've got an exposed fruit and you've got Oklahoma's intense summer heat, yeah. occasionally you're going to get some no matter what. Okay. And um, I think planting like you have here in blocks rather than single rows might provide a little more shade as well. Yeah, I actually did an experiment a few years back and uh, yeah, a little bit of a closer spacing can help to a point. You don't want to get competition between the plants, but that can help give you a little bit of shade. Well, I think a lot of our viewers will be happy to know we struggle with these problems too. <laughs> we certainly do. It's, <laughs> it's common to the garden. Another one uh, is the net sedge, and that's something that a lot of gardeners struggle with in their homes. Yeah, this weed that you see here is yellow nut sedge. It's one of the 10 worst weeds in the world. And uh, even though this particular area did have a commercial herbicide on it, the nut sedge isn't susceptible. It's resistant to a number of herbicides, and it's just come right through, and it's growing. It's really hard to control. Mm -hmm. It's one of those that you just have to stay after, and pull it quite frequently. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brian. Thanks for visiting.